Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, I've been receiving emails from people who are a little confused about which Topaz Labs application they should purchase. I'm talking about Denoise AI, Gigapixel AI, and Sharpen AI. And the reason why some people are confused about which one to purchase is because the functionality of these applications overlap a little bit. For example, I have Denoise AI open now. I, of course, would use this application to reduce noise in an image, but you'll see that there's an option here to enhance sharpness. And if we go over to Sharpen AI, of course, would use this to sharpen an image, there's an option here to reduce noise. It has noise suppression slider. And finally, if we go over to Gigapixel AI, I'd use this to make an image larger in order to print. Uh, you could see that it has options to suppress noise and remove blur. So it remo removes noise and sharpens the image. And that's why a little, you know, some people are a little confused. Which one should they get if they were only going to get one? Also, some people own all three and they don't know what order they should use them in. For example, I have this image here. It definitely needs to be cropped. And because it's going to be cropped, if I want to print it, I'll probably want to use Gigapixel. It was shot at a pretty high ISO. It has a lot of noise, so I need to use denoise. And maybe I'd want to sharpen it too, but maybe I don't. We'll talk about that more in a moment. But what order do you do this? I mean, do you crop first, then remove noise, then use Gigapixel? Or do you remove noise, crop, and you know, Gigapixel, whatever? Well, let's talk about all this stuff. When you might want to use one of these applications over a different application. Um, as far as denoise is concerned, I've said this many times. In my opinion, it's the best noise reduction software made. It's super powerful. And with that said, you don't always need to use it. I mean, most often we're shooting at the lowest native ISO of our camera. Most often that's ISO 100. Some cameras it might be 64, others it might be 200. The number doesn't matter. You're just at a really low uh, ISO. And because you're shooting at that low ISO, you don't have a lot of noise. And if you don't have a lot of noise, applications like Lightroom Capture One, On One, Luminar, all those applications will remove noise in those images just fine. You don't need the noise. So don't think you need to use it on every image. Only time I use denoise is when I have an image that was shot at a super high ISO. Well, what's super high? Well, it depends on the camera. You know, some of my newer cameras, a super high ISO is like maybe 6,400. But on some of my older cameras, it was like 800. And, you know, it was whatever, you know, situation I was in where I used an ISO that produced a lot of noise in the final image. And when I tried to remove that noise in, let's say, Lightroom, I either couldn't do it or Lightroom just softened the image so much that it I lost a lot of sharpness. So then in those situations, I'll use denoise. For this specific image here, it was shot at a pretty high ISO. If I zoom in, uh, let's say to 100, you can see there's a lot, of I, uh, a lot of grain there, a lot of noise there. So in this type of image, if I tried to remove the noise in Lightroom, let's say, um, I would just soften it too much. I'd lose too much detail. So I'd use Denoise. Denoise works great. And also, I want to get it over to Denoise as soon as possible. Uh, the sooner you could get an image into Denoise, uh, the better it will do uh, its job. If you add a lot of saturation to an image, a lot of contrast to an image, a lot of sharpening to an image, and then you try to send it over to Denoise, Denoise will have a harder time uh, getting rid of that noise. So do minimal processing on the image and send it to Denoise in its full resolution, meaning don't crop it. Crop later. Uh, Denoise works best when it has a lot of pixels to work with. So this is the full resolution image. I'll send it over into Denoise. And with that, let's go to a different view for those of you not familiar with Denoise. Um, you actually have three different uh, noise reduction modes that you could choose from. It has Denoise AI, it has AI Clear, which is a whole different algorithm for removing noise. And it has low light um, uh, algorithm as well. So if you have an image that was shot in relatively low light, and that noise um, might be a little more difficult to remove. Well, it has a mode that takes care of that. So if I update uh, my previews here, you can see that it will go through and it will show you um, all three modes. And you could choose which one works best. Uh, there's the original in the top left-hand corner. It looks like Denoise AI uh, did a pretty good job with the noise, the noise AI mode. There might be a little bit of noise in here. I could come in and just move the sliders around and, you know, try to improve it. 
or I could look at low light mode. Low light mode might have softened it a little bit too much. So um, in this case here, I might want to come in and add a little more sharpening here. Uh, so I don't need to sh send it to sharpen AI. I could do it here. Um, maybe I prefer the denoise AI mode, but here I would add a little bit more noise reduction. And, you know, that way you could just um, pick which one works best. Now, once you remove the noise and in an image like this where you want to crop it, then send it over to Gigapixel. Now, I have uh, the same image in Gigapixel, and you could crop using the Gigapixel's, Gigapixel's own crop tool, or you could crop, like if you're using Denoise as a Lightroom plugin, you send the image over to Denoise, we remove that noise, the image comes back into Lightroom, then I could crop in Lightroom if I want to, if I prefer to, then send it into a Gigapixel. In this case, I'll just use their crop tool, and I'll go to the original ratio and so it's going to be a pretty substantial crop. So in this case here, you definitely want to use Gigapixel, but I already reduced noise in the image. I don't have to worry about noise. So I could just take the suppress noise slider down if I want to. Um, try it as, a, you know, an auto mode if I want. Let's go to 2x. So I'm going to make it twice as big and we'll update the, um, or we could go to a different view. Let's go to the side-by-side -side view just so you could see and we'll update the preview. And so what it will do now is it will actually uh, show you a rendition of what the image will look like once it's blown up and much larger. And because I'm at a zoom of 19%, it's going to take a longer time because it has to uh, show us every single pixel. So I'll just uh, pause the video and we'll jump ahead once it's done. Okay, it's done. It did the um, enlarging, and we'll zoom in a little bit, and you can see that it did a fine job, right? So it just kind of, you know, made the image larger so I could now get a larger print from this image because I used Gigapixel. But because I used Denoise first, I don't really have to worry about the suppressed noise slider that much. And because the image was sharp to begin with, and we used some of that sharpening that was in Denoise, we really didn't have to use too much sharpening in Gigapixel. So you could see how they kind of overlap. Um, you know, it's really, every image is different. Some images, I may need to do sharpening in both Denoise and Gigapixel. Other images, I may not, only need to do the sharpening in Denoise. Some images, I won't use Denoise at all. I just did everything in Lightroom, even cropped it, but I want to send it to Gigapixel. And in those images, it's on an image by image basis, whether or not I'm going to suppress noise or remove any blur uh, with that. So um, that's kind of the order of operation as far as those two applications are concerned. And we haven't really talked about Sharpen AI yet. Now Sharpen AI, um, really you don't need it most of the time. I'm assuming that most of your images are going to be sharp. Um, most of us with cameras nowadays could you know, get a sharp image most of the time. In those cases, you don't need sharpen AI. Uh, you could use just the sharpening that's in Lightroom, Capture One, On One, Luminar, all those apps, right? Those, that sharpening and clarity and texture and all those different um, options you have in those applications will be fine. Where you're going to want to use sharpen AI is when you miss focus, when you have camera shake or subject motion, blur. In one of those situations, then you're going to want to use Sharpen AI. Now, in this instance, I have this uh, image of the macaque, and I didn't now focus. If you look over here in the top left-hand corner, there's the original image, and you can see that I missed focus on it. Also, the macaque was walking, actually, on two legs towards me, and um, there might be a little bit of um, kind of motion blur as well. So as we look at it, we look at the sharpen here, and that's okay, but it looks like stabilize is actually a little better, and it may be focus might be even a little better. So you can see we have the three different modes here, sharpen, stabilize, and focus. So uh, again, in most instances, you probably won't need sharpen AI at all. Uh, where you want to use it is when you have uh, an issue, and in this case, I missed focus. Um, other times, there just might be motion blur, uh, 
because the subject was moving and you didn't use a fast enough shutter speed, or maybe you used a slow shutter speed and there was a little bit of camera shake and you need to get rid of that. Um, a lot of times in street photography, it starts getting dark. You're using, you know, um, you know, an aperture priority. Your shutter speed uh, might go way down and you didn't realize it and you'll have like a blurry shot because you were shooting at like, I don't know, one fifth of a second when you should have been shooting at one one twenty fifth of a second. So uh, those instances, that's when you're going to want to use Sharpen AI. And you have the options here to also, or an option here to do noise suppression as well. Um, but again, definitely use denoise if you're shooting at a higher ISO and you need to get rid of that noise. Denoise will do the best job. The noise reduction that is available in Sharpen AI and Gigapixel AI isn't comparable to the noise reduction that is in Denoise AI. Denoise AI is specialized for noise reduction and it will do a way better job than the noise reduction in either of these other two applications. Uh, so, um, you know, definitely use Denoise AI when you need it. Uh, otherwise, uh, you don't just, you know, reduce noise in Lightroom or you could use, you know, one of the other applications here just to remove minor noise. So hopefully that made sense, uh, what I was saying, uh, because actually I got three emails probably over the last two weeks um, from people that were a little confused about which one to purchase. Now, as far as which one you should purchase, that's really up to you. If you're most often shooting at high ISO, a lot of times us wildlife photographers, um, we're shooting at you know ISOs above 1,000, above 1,600, uh, then you're going to probably want to get to noise. On the other hand, um, if you're often shooting in situations that cause blur, whether it's camera blur, motion blur, or your camera just can't achieve focus for some reason all the time, then you're probably going to want to have sharpen AI. And then if you really uh, just have a camera with a kit lens and you're often cropping in really tight, you're probably going to want to have gigapixel AI. Um, it's best if you could get all three, but uh, it, they are kind of expensive. And I do understand that. I do have a discount code for it. I'll have it in the description below the video, along with links uh, to their product. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>